Okay, 1200 watt load. We're gonna do the room temperature test for the heated compressed air test next for a comparison. It's the same as everything was in the last video if you're familiar with what's going on here. If you're not, go back and check the video that's right up in here. We are at 150 PSI. I'm gonna turn this on so it powers these 1200 watt lights for as long as we can power it. We're gonna see how long that can this can put out 1200 watts from a 170 gallon compressed air tank that's at 150 PSI. I'm brought down to, it'll probably go down to about 60 PSI. We'll see where it ends up landing on that. That should be able to tell us how much energy we're actually converting into the electrical output. This will be the first test, regular pressure or regular temperature. Ready, go. Okay, so we have the tanks filled back up. It takes eight minutes to fill the 170 gallons back from about 65 PSI up to 150 PSI. Water coming through the system is 74 degrees Celsius. Mind you, not Fahrenheit, Celsius. Just gonna give her a go. Okay, now that we just did those two tests, we got with the first run right here and the second run just below it, we know that it was operating at a voltage of 11, so that gives us the RPM of 6,700. We know that's 112 hertz. From there, we calculated the moment of inertia, and then knowing the rotational kinetic energy of the disc at this RPM, we know that we had to give the disc stack that much energy just to get it up to that RPM to then start producing power. So this number here for the total joules out ends up including the rotational kinetic energy. So, but we just know that we gave that much energy up to the disc just to get it spinning. So from there we know that each run had a 1200 watt load and we know that the first run lasted for 34 seconds and the second run lasted for 43 seconds. So that's a nine second increase from the 60 degrees Fahrenheit to the 65 degrees Celsius. I had to change that, I had it as Fahrenheit there. So that's about a 25% increase in power output by just heating the compressed air to 65 degrees Celsius. From there, we know the first run did the 1200 watts for 34 seconds, which watts is joules per second. So when you multiply these two together, you get 40,800 joules, which is the amount of energy we got out. And then that plus the amount of energy for increasing the RPM, we get a total energy of 50,545 joules converted into either mechanical or electrical energy. So the second run did 1200 watts for 43 seconds. It gave 
51,600 joules for doing that much power over that amount of time. And then plus the amount of energy to spin it up, we get a total of 61,345 joules. Now in my previous test, I've done power loss, which is this green line right here. And we know right around 6,000 to 7,000 RPM, we're getting anywhere from a one to two horsepower loss. And that's the unloaded deceleration loss test. So this is probably even higher. The loss from gears and bearings and everything else is probably a little bit higher considering it's under a loaded condition, but I'm just assuming the one to two horsepower is about 700 to 800 watts. So if we know that it was also pushing through that kind of resistance for the 34 seconds, we know we were also putting that much energy in, even though we didn't get it electrically out, but just to get a, it's something that I know with these, the bearings and the gears and all the other inefficiencies I have in the system, if we solve them, which will be easy to do, this power loss would actually be available for power out. So considering each one of these had about an 800 watt power loss for every second just because of gear losses, we know that there was about 27,000 joules of energy just given up constantly to the gear and generators. And all that noise you were hearing, that's the energy we lost. It's like 27,000 joules, all that noise, the loudness, and I always like to say, if you can hear it, you're losing energy to it. So if, if considering we fixed these losses, which again, we should, that should be easy, we should be able to use almost all of this energy. I have an axial flux generator that'll be direct on shaft. So there won't be any gear losses. There won't be any iron losses from the motors or the generators because I want, I'm going to be coreless. There'll be some losses in it, but it will get most of this back. And again, this is considering the no load condition for loss. So we're still probably getting worse out of it. But so if we're considering we get that energy back with fixing those gears, we get about 77,000 joules output for this is for the, the 60 degrees Fahrenheit. I should say this isn't super. This is 165, I think, 165 degrees Fahrenheit because it was 75 degrees Celsius, not 65. So the second one, we know we did the 1200 watts for 43 seconds. And then again, we have the 8,000 or 800 watt loss for 43 seconds. That gives us a total of 95,000 joules totally converted. So before we go, I'm going to do a quick calculation of how much energy increase we got from adding the heat. And it's going to be this one, minus this one, divided by this one. So about a 20% increase, at least a 20% increase in power output with the added heat. And that's if we just consider the power out given to the 1200 watt light. We could also do this with this yep that's the same for these two numbers we're going to consider how much loss we got out we're also getting almost exact 20 percent so 20 percent increase by adding 165 degrees of heat to it <laughs> why do i keep saying it that way by adding heat to it to bring the temperature up to 165 degrees that's a significant increase in power output for just 100 degrees fahrenheit increase well on that note I hope you guys enjoyed what I laid out here, and if you have questions, please ask them in the comment section. I'm pretty vigilant at being on top of making sure I give good answers to everyone. So have a nice day.